someone that lights up the room when she comes in. Would you please give her a big welcome? Grace Merrick, Unity Minister. Welcome along, Grace. <laughs> Hi. Looking forward to this. I've got it. You got it? You're on? You've sure got it. <laughs> So, hi. Yes. Do you want me just to take off? Oh, yes, please. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've given you a big welcome. We can do it yep. again. Would no, you you're going to be a big welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Grace. Over to you, Grace. All right. Well, the title of the talk is Who Are You? And it sounded, uh, it came to me in a sort of given way, and I thought, oh, I'll do that. Well, it's driven me crazy trying to work out how to get the words to go that are appropriate with it and, and work with it and so forth. So anyway, I've had a very interesting time getting the message through to this little body. And um, the thing is that, that we are designed to interact with various people. Um, on the planet, we have various people we interact with and usually we want to get on with them, don't we? And so consider I want us to consider how habitually our minds um, filter our thoughts, usually based on memory that comes from childhood or some previous experience. And our thoughts usually filter through these memories. So we're taking part, we like taking part in events, any other ways of doing things is in our lives. So, just going about our business, going shopping, going visiting people, whatever it is we're doing. We not, we enjoy being part of the um, events. But one of the things that's big for me, and it came from childhood, is that in my events and anything I do, because I'm looking back to my childhood, is about not waking people or disturbing them or upsetting them or annoying others. My big thing is not to annoy others. And that comes from my childhood, definitely comes from my childhood. And I have to be careful that uh, it's a big one, uh, that it's not, uh, I'm not waking up people or annoying them. I walk smoothly and fast enough to get through whatever I have to do, not dithering around and knocking on people's doors and it's, stomping on the ground. I live here in a retirement home at the moment and it's lovely. So I get to walk from my bedroom down to the lounge, kitchen, dining area, down the hall, and I get to walk down there quietly, not waking anybody, but firmly, and check to see who is there. And then depending on who's there in the place where I'm walking into, I decide how to behave. I have to think how to behave, whether I'm going to communicate with them or not. Some people don't like to communicate first thing in the morning, and so I don't do that. And other people do. It's all right. I have to work out each one of them. And if there's no one there, I can just sigh with relief and I can just make my cup of tea and do whatever I want to do and go down and see other friends or go back to my room, go back to my own place. But I'm the... But I wonder what's coming next. After I've gone back to my room and I've been down there and seen who's, who's sitting in the sitting area, I wonder what I'm going to do next and get on with, I want to get on with the day's activities. I want to be into action. My thoughts are, I'm going to have a pleasant time doing the things I have to do. And then I think, oh, maybe I'm a bit lazy. Maybe I'm a bit, uh, maybe I'd like to take a rest. And then I have to debate between the two about feeling full of enthusiasm about moving into the activity or thinking, oh, I need to rest. I'm feeling lazy. And the judgments come up. Once I get to have that feeling about lazy or whatever, 
the judgments come up from my childhood. If anybody knows what I mean about judging ourselves from our childhood messages, would you just nod your heads quietly? You do know what I'm talking about. Good, that's all right. As long as I'm not talking rubbish completely. <laughs> we have judgments from childhood that come up. And while considering those, we have to realise that there is not a child present at the moment. There's a grown-up woman, but there's a child inside me and I have memories of more recent interactions and feelings attached that still have the pain or pleasure thing from the childhood memories. I have pain or pleasure depending on what the activity is and the interaction with the people around me. And that's very tricky because I can't judge what they're really feeling. You know how it is when people, you know, you talk to people and you have no idea what they're really thinking. And so that's what it's like when we think, oh, am I having pain or pleasure is this? Am I having a happy person or a hurt person? Is the person I'm talking to in pain? Am I in pain? Are they thinking I'm in pain? I just don't know what people are thinking, but I have a variety of memories of different thoughts that I've had at different times. I'm considering interactions as pain or pleasure. Now, I don't know whether anyone relates to that because most of us don't want to admit that we feel pain about some things. More often than not, we think and realise memories that pop up into our minds as we're going about our business. As we're doing our general tasks and around the place, we're thinking all the time. Our brains are operating all the time. And we think about various things as we go along that remind us from our childhood or our young, young, child, young adulthood or last week that remind us of, a, of something, we'll do it. And so we're always running around with the interactions and the feelings attached. Are they pain or pleasure? And then we get into the who am I? Who am I? Am I feeling these things? That Does that mean that I'm a hurt or a happy person? I like to be considered a happy person. Most of us do. But then if I listen to some of the things that I'm thinking and some of the judgments I'm making, I could easily not be a happy person. Sometimes I think, gosh, I'm just pretending to be happy when I've got those things running around in my subconscious that I'm worrying about. Things are happening and we're worrying about them and we get on with it and be positive and out there in front. And we still got something worrying us in the back of our minds. Who am I? Am I a hurt or happy person? In my interactions, am I having pleasure or pain? More and often than we think and realize, memories pop into our minds, as I said just before, uh, just as we're going around doing our business, catching, walking to catch the bus, sitting on the bus, traveling on the bus, whatever, anything we're doing, driving the car, whatever, memories pop up into our minds from our childhood, our teenage years, our young adult years, our married years, and now being parents, memories pop up out of the blue and most of the time we pretend that they're not happening but they are we have memories too about getting into careers and doing the necessary things to get into the careers we want to get into we have various things we have to do we have to do examinations and we have to do tests and we have to do preparatory studies to apply to get into courses that we want to do at university or anywhere. 
we have to be prepared and we have to do all this work beforehand to get ourselves ready to apply for the thing that we want to get into, the career we want to get into. We have people and events close to us, to our current time frame, and we imagine what they are thinking and wanting from us. You see, we've all met new people in the last, you know, six months or a year or whatever, and we want to know what they want to get from our friendship. They want to know what they're going to get. And they want to know what they have to give us in order to get it. And it keeps on being this to and fro business about who gives what to whom and who's going to do what and who's going to be really straightforward with exactly what's going on, even though it might hurt the person that we're talking to. And so we do lots of things that we don't want to hurt people, but we don't want to make ourselves... Um, in a position of becoming a victim of their hurting us. And I think that this not wanting to be hurt is quite important. A lot of people are basing their um, uh, their belief about the relationship with people based on what they think the person wants from us, not what we think that we can interrelate with the person on a on a different level it's we've got to give the person what they want in order to have their their attention is one of the beliefs that we have running around in the back of our minds and we tend to put that one up in front of us and it makes it really difficult for people to get through to actually communicate with us in an open way i hope that's making sense to you because it makes sense to me but it is tricky to get around the corners that go in this in this whole business. I think the worst of it is that most of us haven't really thought through the years that we are not really dealing with our feelings that come up while we're inter interrelating with people. It's good when people do. I had someone the other day uh, on the telephone who shall be nameless who uh, I said something to the person and they said to me, I'm not sure that I understood what you meant by that. What did you mean by that? And it was so great because I could explain that it wasn't a hurtful thing I was saying. It was an opening up thing. And then we went into a whole different phase about it all. It was wonderful. Those sort of things are great. But we don't do it inside ourselves very much about people. We tend to put on a straight face and behave one way or the other. And um, the trick is they're basing what they want from us on what they believe about themselves. You see, everybody is doing what wanting from us according to what they believe about themselves. So the stuff about believing of stuff about ourselves and working with it and living with it and allowing it to be there happens for all of us and it happens on both sides of the interrelationship. It really, really does. Everybody is having their own idea about themselves because when they were little kids, such and such a thing happened. They think if this, if I get anywhere near that again, it'll happen again. Because such and such happened when they were teenagers, we think, oh, that might happen again. And they have this fear that it'll happen again if they've ever had it happen in their lives. And um, the, the wanting from us what they perhaps thought they didn't get in earlier years. They're wanting from us something that they want and we're not sure, they're not sure if we can give it to them. Does that make sense? They aren't sure that we can give it to them, but they want it from us. And they don't know quite how to express that to us directly. And it makes it really hard for us to be able to <laughs> fit in and help them with their problems and their needs and their desires. But 
they're not quite sure if they really do want it. The trick is they're basing what they want from us is based on what they believe about themselves and judgments they have made about our behaviours, mixture of what they think about themselves and what they think about our behaviours. If they think that they're not easy to get on with and friendly with people and so forth, and then we happen to turn away when they're talking to us, they'll judge us and say we're nasty, we're, we're being nasty to them. But it's based on what they were thinking about themselves, not on us. Our behaviours um, are subject to their judgments, but then judgments are descended from their feelings about themselves and their old memories of what they have felt hurt in the past. I'm not talking now about really nasty behaviour. You know, just any of our behaviours can be anything. It can be, you know, if I suddenly say, oh, I just need to jump up and go out into the hallway and see what that noise is, that's not being unpleasant to the person who's sitting in this room if there's someone with me. That's just saying what I want to do. So many of our behaviours we do that are just simply because we need to and want to. And everyone has their own past feelings attached to events in the past. Everyone has their own feelings. No matter what happened, what event happened, and we were all there, we all, all had a different feeling about it. We all had a different result. We all had a different take on the whole event. If you get five people together who were in one room at the same time, they will not give the same story about what happened. Can't do it. It's impossible. And so we have very different opinions going around as they're driving around in their cars, as they're riding in the buses, as they're walking down the street, as they're sitting in the room, as they're, you know, doing anything. Everyone has different things. I can see a line of you up the top of the screen here and you all have different opinions about what's going on. You all have different judgments or feelings about me and what I'm saying. And it just is just that's the way it really is because there's variety. And everyone has past feelings Anyone has past feelings about anything. It can be nice, it can be nasty, it could be minor, it could be little. It could be just a small thing that we sort of... Sometimes people make opinions about other people from little tiny behaviours that they do over a period of time, just little ones. And some people add that together and make a whole, whole belief about the person's behaviour. It's fascinating. And when we come to realise how many of our little thoughts about things really do affect our belief system, it becomes a bit scary because we <laughs> have to start changing the little things more often than we've been doing in the past. Everyone has their own past feelings attached to events. And we don't know what they are, so we can't always fit in with them. Now, they look at us from, other people look at us from, from their memories of childhood events and their decisions and what they learnt out of the childhood events that we might be reflecting some behaviour that is connected with it. They can pop back to the childhood thing. If you came from a childhood like mine where um, I wasn't really fully accepted by my sisters, I didn't know they were half-sisters and they were older than I was and they didn't want them to be too close to me. Oh, it's a long story. But anyway, it wasn't their fault or mine that they didn't spend much time with me. But I thought it was because they didn't like me and it wasn't. It was because they'd been, you know, purposely kept a bit separate from me. And so that was a whole thing in my childhood about feeling uh, that I'm not liked. And so I have that 
that still pops up now when I'm with a group of people and I'm never quite sure whether they're going to like me or not because it's from my childhood when I was a very, very little girl. And there's all sorts of other things that come up that we I can see come from my childhood that I didn't know was going to affect me for so long. So we get ourselves involved with past um, uh, events and other people's opinions, and it's very confusing, and we try to make it simple by deciding it's right or wrong. Well, we can't decide things are right or wrong because we cannot always know what's right and what's wrong. What's right for some person, for them to believe, might be wrong for us to believe. Some people have the right to believe what they believe about their behaviour and we don't have the right to criticise them for it. But we have the right to say, I didn't like it, and they don't have the right to say there's something wrong with our not liking it. Does that make sense? We have these different things that go on and we need to get really honest with ourselves about them. We often judge um, our, uh, <laughs> yes, it's very confusing. And we try to manage, make it simple, right or wrong. What we do have to remember, what we do have to remember is that we and others come from the same loving life force. We are children of God, each of us. <laughs> we judge ourselves and others and lose our true God connection with our God self. We become part of a split existence. When we're not accepting what's going on and seeing God present in it and we're feeling separate from God, we're having a split existence. If we can see that God is in this difference that's going on and we can say, yes, it's all part of a plan that's working out, we can feel together with God. It's great. We don't have to have a split existence, but most of the time, dearies, we do have a split existence and that's a fact. <laughs> now it's not necessarily easy or but it's necessary to remember that we and they are children of God therefore we are all equals no matter what forgiveness means giving before therefore we have to give others and ourselves, the belief in the meaning of God as Father. The creative aspect of universal energy. And I laughed like a drain when I opened my daily word this morning and it said it was Father's Day. And I know it's, you're all saying it's in America, but anyway, I just know that today for us it's Father's Day because we are all children of the one father and the creative impulse of the universe, the creative energy of the universe is in everything. Now, everything, absolutely everything, every cell of our body has that creative energy within us. Everything we have on our desks, on our beds, in our rooms, on our floors, on our ceilings, on our walls, anything that we have, the trees, the cars, the whole thing, every spot of it has the creative energy in it. So we have to realise that we live, move and have our being in this creative energy, with it, within us. And if we want to get on with other people, we can very, very, very simply train ourselves to see them as being part of the creative energy. Now, that sounds like magic, but it sort of is. If we will see the other people as being one with our creative energy, with the creative energy that has us operating and we are all in this creative energy. We'll have a whole lot happier life. 
and see them all as beloved children of creative energy of the universes, of the universe. In every cell of their bodies, every cell of their bodies is filled with this creative energy too. Ours is, theirs is. And if we really practice this in little, little things on a daily basis as we walk around our houses or whatever, do things, we practice it, seeing the creative energy in, through, and as everyone else. <laughs> Just watch what happens. A whole new life opens up for us. So let's take a moment now to, to go within and have a little practice of that. If you will, I invite you to sit back in your chair as much as you can, comfortably. Feel your legs relax a little bit. Just wiggle your feet around a little bit and let your legs relax a little bit. And feel your hands relax a little bit. And allow yourself to sink into a little comfortable space. And whatever memory comes up to you from feeling comfort, say yes to it. When you can remember feeling comfort, Yes, say yes to it. And allow your legs and feet and arms and hands, your head and neck, and your chest and every part of your body. Allow it to feel the creative energy moving in it. Just sit still enough to feel the moving energy. And we can say yes to it. For the answer to who are you is I am creative energy expressing I am creative energy sharing the energy and the love on planet earth who am I I am an expression of creative energy giving love, giving help, giving support, giving truth. I am creative energy. along with the whole universe. Enjoying our oneness. Enjoying the oneness. And I am feeling the loving spirit of the one presence and the one power in every cell of my body right now. And just for a few moments, let us stay in that position, feeling the energy. And we give thanks that we have had another opportunity to experience that oneness with that creative energy that is the God of our understanding.
And so it is. And so we joyfully let it be. Amen. So welcome back, everybody, and let's just keep that space for a little bit longer, and we have a special song to follow that message. 